52 people in the last week, and uh, it was five from Rashahi, and then uh, Rashahi is right next to India on the west side, and then above that, there's a, a region called Dijinapur, and there's two churches up there, and uh, he's going to baptize another 10 at least uh, next week. Now, the thing is this, he's not, you know, the thing is not easy believers, you know, it's not one, two, three, believe in me. It's, it's a serious, you know, dealing with them. And uh, this has been in the last year and a half uh, that the converts have been saved and, and no one's over there that could, could baptize them. Maybe uh, Brother Rami could have, but uh, he was in that area. He's down in Dhaka. So just great news, I'll tell you. And praise the Lord for that. And uh, thank, thank the Lord that uh, Nathaniel was uh, prepared these men, how to deal with people, how to talk to people. And uh, so uh, then there's going to be another, so that's going to be about 32 at least, uh, before these two churches are, are organized, and, uh, and then the, the pastor is going to be ordained. That's next Saturday. And uh, then he's going to head down. That's Dijinapur, and he's going to head all the way down southeast in uh, that country. And there's a Buddhist couple. They were f former Buddhists, but they were converted to Christ. And they heard his message over the, um, what do you call it? Uh, Facebook. <laughs> and um, so they heard the message, and that's, they received Christ after listening to him for about a year. And so that's great news, and he's going to visit them for the first time. And uh, I, hopefully they get baptized. They're going to move up to Brother Smith's, which is all the way up north. And um, there's some other folks in that, in that area. So God is working greatly. I appreciate your prayers and all that you're doing and interceding for Nathaniel. So he asked me um, to really pray because... Uh, the people uh, of the Islamic faith are not happy. And, uh, you know, they're not going to say, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, it could be some dire straits that they find themselves in. But we're going to trust God that God's going to protect them and uh, God's going to take care of them. Amen? Amen? So keep Nathaniel in your prayers and, uh, and uh, thank you for that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, and uh, let's pray, and we'll get right to our message. So, Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for every person here. We so appreciate taking their time out to come to church. And, Father, we pray that you do a work. The preaching, Father, that we're going to do is... Uh, we're, we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for your glory. And we pray, Father, you speak to hearts and lives and let people examine themselves. And uh, I pray that people would get the rest they need. And this is a spiritual rest. And I pray that you speak to our hearts, glorify yourself. And, Father, we ask that you do a great work here at Long Island Baptist Church that only you can do. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He Hebrews chapter 4. We pick it up here in verse 1. Let, let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left, uh, uh, le left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem come short of it. So this rest that he's speaking about is a spiritual rest. And it's not just, you know, taking a nap in the afternoon. It's a spiritual rest of being right with God and right with your fellow man and so on. So the Bible goes on and says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in, that they, uh, in uh, them that heard it. So the problem was everyone heard it, but they didn't mix it with faith. They didn't receive Christ. They didn't believe what the Bible said. Verse 3. For we which uh, have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. 
For he spake in certain places of the seventh day on, the, on this wise, and God rests the seventh day from his work, works. And in this place again, if they shall enter my rest. Seeing therefore uh, it remaineth, uh, some must enter therein, and they uh, to whom it is first preached, enter not in because of unbelief. And again, he limit the, the certain day, saying, In David, today, after so long a time, as he saith today, if you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken uh, of another day. There remaineth therefore rest of the people of God. For he that, that is entered into his rest, he also sh hath ceased from his own works, as God did for from us, let us therefore labor, uh, let us labor therefore to enter in this rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Thank you, may you be seated. So review, Jesus uh, is superior than anyone or anything. And the Apostle Paul is writing to converted Jews and uh, in, in speaking to them who Paul was trying to uh, deprogrammed from the false beliefs of Judaism. And, you know, that's a, a process. That's part of our sanctification where we uh, depart from our old religion to faith in Christ. And so he, he's addressed in chapter 3 the damning and debilitating sin of uh, unbelief. And Paul, on the leadership of the Holy Spirit, refers back to the Old Testament um, back to Exodus and Numbers as the Hebrews left Egypt and headed into the promised land. Now Paul brings out in Hebrews 3 the people's sins of unbelief. And this was a, a great sin. And I, I'm telling you, beloved, you say, well, I have, that's my problem. I have unbelief. All right, here's the remedy. I want you to look. Everyone look up here. Romans 10, 17. So then faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So you want to have faith? Get in the book. Amen. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. God has provided a, a remedy Amen. for all of us right. to be saved and to be born again. Amen. So this caused 598,000 men to die in the wilderness, while only two, Joshua and Caleb, entered into the promised land. And their steps downward was first denial of their spiritual needs. That's the first problem. People here, Brother Coco came to my office just a little while ago. That was a great message Amen. in Sunday Amen. school. It really was. He rang the bell. And uh, this is round two. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, that was pretty good, right? Round two? Okay. So uh, anyway... Um, it was a, a very plain, and it was wonderful. And James came and he said, what's wrong with people? Why? I said, they're lost. They're blind. We, we've got we to gotta, you know, uh, pray for people. People have got to have their blindness removed. You know, Paul said uh, about the people's blindness, uh, you know, it's, it's from the devil. That's, that's why they're blind. That's why they, they don't understand. They don't see. You know, people can be so self-righteous and think they have the right belief and so on. But it's a work to get, Jesus told us, you know, what it is to get people saved. And he said, after he said that, he said, you know, it's, it's uh, few that be that find it. So it's a real struggle. Yet it's so simple to be saved. So they, first of all, don't, uh, they deny their spiritual needs. Secondly, deliberate uh, preoccupation with temporal things. It's like, you know, the shiny thing that goes across that and then next thing you know, they're following after. You know, God speaks to our heart. We're, we're convicted. And then the, the shiny thing, ugh. You know, and that's what happens. And then third of all, they depart from the truth. Their hearts have been deceived by sin. So even though the Lord worked miracles, fought on their behalf, the heart grows hard 
against God. And may I say that uh, one of the most foolish things men can do is to rise up against the Lord. I mean, you, you'd be better off going to some slum somewhere and the meanest men you run into and go up against them than go up against God. I mean, that is suicide. So, yet men rise up, they become hard, uh, uh, hard-hearted and rebel. And they have anger, pride, bitterness, uh, uh, complaining or murmuring against God. Or, or uh, you, know, uh, you know, God's church and feeling that God is, is, is not just. And their thoughts or actions are foolishness by men. In chapter 4, the continue with the warning uh, is found in chapter 3. And first of all, uh, Paul continues the confrontation. He says in verse um, 1, he says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. And uh, again, Paul says in verse 1, Let us therefore fear. Therefore, is a concluding uh, uh, on the, what Paul had already said in chapter 3 of the unbelief of Israel and their hard-heartedness. And so he speaks about fear. In Matthew 10 and verse 28, let's turn there, please. Matthew 10 and verse 28. And the Bible says in verse 28, uh, And fear not them which kill the body, but not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So we're not, we're not to fear the sons of Anak uh, or giants or men or devils, but rather fear God only. Why? He can destroy the soul and the body. It's only because the Lord who has power to kill or make uh, alive it's only the Lord who had the authority to rest, uh, I'm sorry, to send someone to hell. The Bible says, fear him. And uh, that's what God commands us to do. We should have reverence, awe, respect, uh, honor. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, fear God. In chapter 14 of Revelation, verse 7, saying unto, uh, un, uh, with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the house of uh, for the uh, hour judgment has come. So Christians should not have a fear of condemnation or a fear of the sense of terror or being terrorized by hell, uh, the lake of fire. Our text is speaking of such, of such fear. Paul, uh, as well as all uh, New Testament writers, confronted these uh, professing Jews on their profession of faith. And he did so because they were some who manifest no fruit of the Spirit. And the Bible says in Hebrews 6 and verse 9, look it up. The Bible says there are things that accompany salvation. There are things. You know, if a person could say this, it's common among all converts. There's things that are going to accompany salvation. And the fear of terrorizing uh, is lacking with most lost people. They speak of being lost as if they were speaking of some extreme, uh, ex extremely common, vanilla and chocolate, uh, Pepsi or Coke. I know Pepsi. But anyway, uh, you know, mild or spicy, save or lost. To be lost is a terrible estate. It's not to be run and re ruled by sin and self. These, these, are, these are difficult things to be involved with, to be lost. To be lost is to live without God the Father, without His Son, Jesus Christ, and without His Holy Spirit. It's an earthly existence. It's a tem uh, temporal existence. It's life without God. It's a fruitless life. It's life uh, robs God of His rightful glory. It's a life which ends in eternal separation from God and from His goodness. And Paul is stating this verse, in verse 1 uh, of chapter uh, in Hebrews, you know, he, he states, uh, let us therefore fear, lest the promise of being left of us entering into his rest. 
Then notice, if you would, uh, verse 4. And the Bible says, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. So the Bible tells us, again, lest uh, uh, you think you, you have come to Christ too late to enter into God's rest. Some, uh, uh, some Jews had apparently uh, were, talked themselves into believing that they were okay, they were fine. It's not too late, I have time. How much time do you have? Uh, I was talking to a, a woman uh, before the service and they tell me there's a man up in Stony Brook uh, who's dying with brain cancer. And his, I think his name is, is it Brian? Philip. So we prayed for him before he <clears throat> came in the service. And uh, if you think of him, pray for the guy. He's failing. 32 years old, dying of brain cancer. I mean, 32. So, you know, you never know when you're going to, uh, your time to go. Again, you could leave here today and, and die, which would be terrible, but it could happen. Amen? So uh, it's a sobering thought, but a, a good thought for the human to have. It's a good thought. So uh, it wasn't that they were too late, but rather they could lose their opportunity to be saved. See, uh, you know, you, you think that I can be saved any time I want to be saved, but you've got to consider the Spirit of God's got to draw you. <laughs> That's a fact. And if, if not, then you're really, you don't understand the scriptures. So they can lose the opportunity to be saved if they're uh, confused to put off being converted. As long as one is troubled over their sin uh, or is concerned about their soul, they can be saved. So there was a man uh, years ago, and his name uh, uh, was Mel Trotter. And he was uh, a, a man who just lived in sin. He, his children were starving because he spent his money on alcohol. And his little girl died of malnutrition when she was about four. And the neighbors gave enough money to buy her some new clothes for the burial and a casket. And in the middle of the night, Trotta uh, broke into the mortuary, took the clothes off the dead child, and exchanged them for a drink not long afterward. They said, who, who could do that? A person's addicted. A person's a drunk. A person's addicted to drugs. However, the Lord Jesus Christ reached down and changed his life and became one of the greatest preachers America has known. So you, you can think, well, I'm not that way. But God says we have evil hearts. God says we're enemies of God. God says we're ungodly. God says we're sinners. I mean, uh, I wish I remember that quote, Liz. Uh, my wife has a quote coming out in, in, in an article, and it was by Charles Spurgeon. Someone had said to uh, uh, Mr. Spurgeon, they said, uh, you know, uh, this guy said this about me. He said, well, good thing he really doesn't know how bad you really are. If he had known how bad you are, he'd write, you know, what, what, what God says about you. But that's a good thought. You know, we're worse off than what people can say about us. And that's all of us. He said, I'm not that way. Yes, you are. Don't fool yourself. I mean, just think about this. When you're by yourself and you, you, you can or you do allow your heart to fantasize and think, where does it go? The to church, the sin of my preaching? Nope. Paul is confronting the Hebrews to make their calling and that election sure, to examine themselves. And when they, what would they... Uh, with, uh, in, I'm sorry, what they were in the faith to, to, to make sure that they had uh, 
believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and their belief was not in vain, to prove their own selves, to prove their salvation by their fruit, and which only the Holy Ghost could bring forth. And you know, Brother Mark did a great job last week about the fruit of the Spirit. Don't think that I go to church uh, you know, once on a Sunday or I, you know, I, I read my Bible. That's fine. But there are a lot of people who read their Bibles and they're not saved. There are a lot of people who go to church. You know? Churches are packed out this morning in some places because people just believe I go to church. That's good enough. That's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not. The fruit of the Spirit is holiness. It's righteousness. It's uh, what Galatians says in, uh, about uh, God, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, temperance. Against such there's no law. In other words, God's not going to pass a law saying, this is the fruit of the Spirit, you live this way. Well, he does say that, but you've got to have the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't produce those. So Paul's continuing confrontation, then Paul's call to rest. Now, to the lost, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. In, uh, for the saved, notice Hebrews 4 and verse 11, let us, therefore, uh, to, uh, let us labor therefore to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, rest is found 11 times in uh, the, these verses and is used in five different senses. The primary meaning is to cease or put off, uh, putting to rest. Uh, the first thought is God's Sabbath is a rest. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Let's turn there, please. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 2, first book of the Bible. And notice you would verse 2, and on, this, on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And then to compare that to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 4, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, God did rest on the seventh day from all his works. So this rest speaks of when the Lord ceased um, when the Lord ceased on his creation uh, work and everything the Lord created was complete and God said it was very good and the Lord had never since then uh, has done any further creation work. You know, once God was done, it was done and the rest would take care of itself. And the second thought is Canaan speaks of a rest after wandering for 40 years. Let us see the, the child of God rest in Christ. Notice verse 3. For we which have believed do rest, uh, do enter into rest, as he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter in my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And then Paul goes on and says in verse 10, he said, for he that entered into his rest he also ceased from his own works as God did from his. So the Lord had, had the Sabbath rest, also his redemption rest. Our redemption is complete in Jesus Christ. And our rest is in the finished work of Calvary. Notice chapter 10 and verse 10, please. Chapter 10 and verse 10 of Hebrews. And the Bible says in verse 10 of chapter 10, by which we were all sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once for all. Now that's an important statement. Uh, Hebrews is a once for all book. And Jesus rested uh, after his redemption work on Calvary because he sent down at the, he sat down at the Father's right hand. And no one will be saved without resting in the fact of Jesus' work on the cross. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4, verse 3 and 4, speaks of how Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, was burying, rose again the third day. And then in Romans chapter 10, for with the, uh, that's not right, 
Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. The Bible tells us in verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that's a wonderful thought that I've got to believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ and that Jesus died for me, that he gave his life for me. He gave his life for you. And to sit here and just reject it, just be in unbelief, that tells me how much time you're spending in the word of God. And that's the key. You know, if I, if I told you that, you know, your child's going to die, I don't have time. I may believe I'm a doctor. I don't have time, but in this book, the answer is, is for your child. I don't know where it is, but it's in this book. I take time to read it. I would think the average parent would stay up as long as it took to read that book to get the answer. And so with that in mind, here you're talking about your eternal soul. Talking, talking about unbelief. You don't know if Jesus died and was buried and rose again the third day. The Bible speaks of it. And if you want to have an answer, you've got to look at the book. And uh, I trust you'll do that. Our, our, min, our victory as believers is rest in Christ. Notice verse 11 back in chapter 4. Verse 11, let, our, let us labor to enter into this rest, lest any man fall at the same example of unbelief. So we have a future rest in eternity with the Lord. Notice verse 8 through 10. The Bible says, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would, would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remains therefore rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into the rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. So we see Paul uh, uh, counting, uh, Paul's counting confrontation, Paul's call to rest, and Paul illustrates this concept. In Hebrews chapter 3, notice verse 7. And uh, you may think uh, this message is not really coming clear. Just stay with me. It's going to get clear up in just a moment. So notice verse 7, uh, seven of chapter 3. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today if you'll hear his voice, harden not your hearts in the provocation in the day of temptation and wilderness. And your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my works uh, 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with the uh, generation said, they do always err from their heart, and they have not known my way. So I swear my wrath, they shall not enter into their rest. Now we observe their deliverance from Egypt and the picture of salvation, deliverance from this world. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, who, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and of our Father. Pharaoh pictured the devil. Egypt pictures sin's bondage. And Israel cross and Red Sea pictures salvation, deliverance from sin and Satan. They turn their backs on Egypt. That is why in Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Why? We've been delivered from that. And repentance and imperative mixed with faith. Now, we observe their disbelief. Notice chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible says, Seeing therefore remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter, uh, enter not in because of unbelief. Now, let's go back to Numbers, uh, if you would. Uh, Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, we pick up here in verse 7. And the Bible says in verse 7, uh, and, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, uh, the land which we pass through to search uh, 
it is an exceeding good land. But if the Lord delight in us, then we will bring us into this land and give it to us in the land which floweth milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. They, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not. But all the congregation had, uh, all the congregation made stone, and then with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will they err? They believe me um, for all the signs which I have showed among them. So here they had unbelief in verse 11. And uh, notice the Lord you know, had said, this is a great opportunity. I'm giving you the land. The people are, uh, they have no defense. We're going to go in there and, and take the land. And they rebelled against it because of their unbelief. Now, unbelief is provoking God. And it is questioning his holiness, his uh, uh, goodness, uh, his word. And uh, it's God's desire was to smite the people for questioning the Lord for doubting his word. That's exactly how God thought about it. And their unbelief led to dissatisfaction and to defeat, despair, and discontentment, which led to complaining, the murmuring, criticizing, and then God's uh, judgment. Now, God's word commands us to live by faith. Amen? Amen. We're to live by faith. I mean, there's no other command in the Bible but taking God at his word. In Mark chapter 1, verse 15, repent and believe the gospel. And the first act of faith is found here in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, and Jesus answers, saith unto them, have faith in God. In Numbers uh, chapter uh, 14, verse 8 and 9, the Bible says, only rebel not against the Lord. They weren't to rebel. They were to take him at his word. And they rebelled by their lack of faith and their disobedience. Now, here's the thing that differs from us. They heard the voice of the Lord. God spoke to them and gave them instruction how to go about, how we're going to take that land. And what he said was, it was a land flowing, milk and honey. And here they were, Egyptian slaves. They, the Egyptian let them go. They cross the, the Red Sea, and then they get to the land that should have taken them about 10 days to cross. And they just spent 40 years there. Why? Because they're belly aching. They're complaining and murmuring. This is hard. It's difficult. Well, why, why was it so hard? Because they didn't go by faith. And they complained against God. Now, they rebel against the lack of faith and their disobedience, faithfulness, unbelief equals rebellion. And I said it right. Faith, faithlessness, unbelief equals rebellion. Rebellion is as a sin in witchcraft. I mean, that's, that's the difference. You may say, well, I don't have faith. That's the sin of witchcraft. It's like you being in the back room in the kitchen and, and putting together some, uh, some spell as a sin of witchcraft. Not believing will answer our, uh, not, a belie uh, not to believe, uh, he will answer our prayers Help us, guide us, lead us, deliver us, enable us. And we're admonished to believe, to embrace, to trust, rely on, uh, cling to, hope in, rest in the Lord. And uh, think about this uh, with me. Acts chapter 15, verse 18. Know unto God are all his works from the beginning, beginning uh, of the world. Everything God does is 
rooted in his attribute of holiness, which speaks that God is perfect. He's without sin. Now, you and I, we're sinners. God's not. So when he says something, it's what? It's true. Not to be doubted, not to say, well, I'm going to take it in my, my own hands. Go ahead. You'll be up all night without sleep. Now, he can do exactly what he wants, what is right, or what is best. He's holy and perfect. And God has eternal uh, design. And the Lord is working out his eternal purpose. What is he purpose in Christ Jesus, our Lord, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 11. And the Lord has designed uh, in providence in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. Now, we do not believe, like unbelievers say, it was meant to be. Uh, it will happen if it happens. Uh, it is what it is. So that's, that's a great, great line of faith. Stupid. What does that mean? It is what it is. These statements are statements quite different than Romans 8, 28. And we know that all the things work together for good. Now watch this. To them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Here again is the sovereignty of God that the Lord can enter into any situation and work it out uh, and, and in, according to his will. Now, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, uh, who verily was fa- uh, the fa- foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in the last times for you. So God says he personalizes it. I'm reading that verse, and I say, this is for me. You're reading the verses for you. And here the Lord gives us a humble glimpse of himself in eternity past to see that all these things, salvation, redemption, regeneration, conversion, being born again, being saved, adopted, sanctified, was all planned out in eternity past. That was a how, I don't understand that. Well, you know what? I'm the president of the club. You're welcome. Join. I don't understand it. But that's God who is eternal. Who always was and always will be. So all this came to pass. The virgin birth, birth, the sinless life, the fulfillment of the law, the cross, the burial, and resurrection. Notice the last two words of First Peter 1.20, for you. What is man that thou art mindful of? So Romans 8, verse 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? In other words, God gave us the costless, <coughs> costliest, most expensive, most valuable possession, himself. That's what God did. He gave himself. What is that God would not give you? He that spared not his own son. What foolishness. And I say this, what wickedness. Not to trust God. Not to believe God. Not to rely on God. Not to look to the Lord. Not to obey him. It's wicked. And Israel refused to trust the Lord, so they they wanted for 40 years to not enter into the rest. They continued. Uh, So we see Paul's continuing confrontation, Paul's call to rest. Paul illustrates the concept. And last of all, number four, Paul calls uh, us to comprehend. Now notice chapter 4 and verse 9 through 11 of Hebrews. <clears throat> the Bible says, There remains therefore a rest of the people of God. For he that entered into his rest 
has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to rest uh, into that re- to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. But Paul wants each person to enter God's rest, both the saved and lost. Notice letter A, rest for the soul, salvation. Verse 1, his rest. Verse 5, my rest. Verse 10, his rest. Paul, uh, God has provided soul rest for the weary sinner. So sinner, who, who is weary of being lost? Who is weary of living without Christ? Sinner, who's weary for living for self? The sinner who's weary of the torments of sin. The sinner who's weary of the reaping of sin. The sinner who's weary of not being forgiven of his sins. Note again chapter 4. I mean, God promised you rest. And it's so important that we enter in. Let it be, God has provided service, rest. What is the meaning of all his rest? So Israel, uh, Israel uh, entering Canaan land, entered into his rest. Yet they fought, they conquered, they understood God's rest. And God's rest is that we trust him in all and everything. In all things, everything, every moment, every hour, every day. And here's the difference between religion and relationship, uh, which will lead to true rest. All religion seeks and promises the same thing. They, They promise righteousness, spiritual light, the truth, peace, strength and joy. But the problem is religion doesn't deliver that. It doesn't. But salvation does. So we see that uh, God uh, promises rest to the saved. And uh, again, think about what God said that uh, from the start, man uh, upward, and uh, their religion is man-centered, not God. And whereas true relationship with the God starts with God giving himself and, uh, for man and giving himself to us, giving us his gifts. And God gave his righteousness for, for us to t- take. We gave God our sin. He gives us his righteousness. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God illuminates our sinful spiritual blindness, our darkness. And the Lord is, is our light. Christ is our strength. God dwells with us. And we're, we're the living temples of God. We're, uh, d- we dwell in, in, in the Son of God. So think about these verses, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Paul says in Galatians, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And this is the rest from God it can be our rest. And uh, even though the Israelites went into Canaan land and battled and fought and labored, it was their rest because it was God's will. That's another good thought. They, they, they had the rest because they were doing God's will. And that's so important that we understand that. And when one is obedient, living by his faith, it is then that we are led by the Lord. It is uh, then that we are resting in the Lord and are, are uh, in his rest. So notice Hebrews chapter 4, we see verse 9. And the Bible says in verse 9, there remaineth a rest to, one, to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into his rest, lest any man 
fall after the same example of unbelief. And this is the key. Verse 11 says, Let us labor therefore to enter into God's rest. And the unsaved cannot. Uh, they can't work for it. They can't earn it. They can't merit it. They, they, and labor for salvation. And yet the scriptures command us to press into the kingdom of God. Uh, seek the Lord while he may be found. To search the scriptures. The Bible says. Again, promise from the Lord, you, you search me with all your heart, you're what? And so the, the saved must labor to enter in this rest. Now, rest speaks of resting in God's grace. Resting means freedom from whatsoever worries or disturbs us. And I have to tell you, beloved, it's so important that we uh, cast all our care upon him that we live on the leadership of God's spirit and we trust God implicitly. Now rest speaks about lying down, being uh, fixed, settled, secure. Rest speaks of ceasing from uh, frustration, running in spirit. Uh, you know, the idea of running around, running around you in circles well, that's, that's the idea, that we're spiritually going to press on and do God's will. Now, we see we're freed from being tossed about by every wind of doctrine. Rest speaks of being established, rooted, grounded, unmovable, then all the, the rest that is spoken of in Hebrews chapter 4. And rest speaks of remaining confident, uh, uh, keeping trust to maintain our confidence in the Lord. Now, it's not being fearful, but God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So it's not uh, us being fearful. God didn't give that to us. If God has, hasn't given that to us, then it is the flesh, the world, and the devil. And I say this with all sincerity, you, you can't live that way because it speaks of unbelief. Now, this is what Israel forfeited by not believing God and not uh, what every other child of God has and does forfeit by not trusting the Lord. Now, take your Bible, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. We're done in a few minutes. Matthew 6, and notice verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, or, or uh, not, uh, not yet for your body, but you shall, uh, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body and the raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather, barn, and gather into barns, uh, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, and you're not much better than them. And then notice what God says here. He, he tells us in verse uh, 30, 33, here's the king. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So what does God say? Take no thought, but rather rest. So we've got to believe God. We've got to trust God. We've got to rely upon God, rest in God, pray, believe in God, hope in God. No thought means no thought. Uh, unbelief, worry is a sin. It's, it's distrusting God. And he said, well, I believe in God. I trust God. But I don't know about this situation. Well, then you're not trusting him. And uh, the promises, provision, and providence, you know, it's all what God does for us and helps us. It's the opposite of rest, which is uh, content with, with the Lord is, is a, a regardless of the circumstances. And uh, so the Bible tells us fear not, but rather labor and do God's will for our lives. 
And again, it's not fear, but rest. Now, there are two other thoughts about rest I want to bring out real quickly. And uh, rest is going to be during the millennium, also eternal rest in eternity. So in conclusion, there's four thoughts. The availability of rest, salvation service, we see verse 1. Verse uh, number 2, the uh, element of rest is personal faith. Uh, saved by faith, we live by faith. As we see Christ Jesus, so walk in him. Uh, personal work of God in, in our lives. We look at the sanctification, the Holy Spirit setting us apart, God's work along with God's labor. And uh, it was mentioned about Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing that He that has but a good, begun a good work in us will perform until the day of Jesus Christ. And then uh, we see that we, we shouldn't be murmuring, outward complaining, disputing, inward grumbling about life, about family, about money, about situation, about problems, about burdens, about uh, brethren. And uh, when we practice these things, it's going to lead us uh, into rest. And that's what God wants. He wants us to experience what we're going to experience in heaven, but he wants it on earth. Now, how many people live that way? I wouldn't embarrass anyone. I wouldn't ask. But it's important that we live that way. So I'm, I'm fine when everything's working right. <laughs> in life, you know it's not going to work right. It's, it's really kind of foolishness to think that way. Life's not that way. Life has problems, has challenges, difficulties. So we see our response to God's command. And then last of all, the urgency of rest. The Bible says in verse 11, Let us labor, let's labor therefore to enter into his rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now the urgency to rest, he said, labor. Let's be diligent. And instead of wandering in the wilderness, let's enter in the place of rest. Because the Lord, the, Lord, the Spirit-filled life is, is accessible to the saved. It's a life of purpose. It's a life of conquering. It's a life of victory. And it's all resting in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. And we praise you, Lord, for this. And thank you for speaking to our hearts today. And Father, it's my prayer that you'd help us to come to some conclusions as people. And may the saved work with God, 